ओम साई श्री साई जय साई ओम ओम साई श्री साई जय साई ओम ओम साई श्री साई जय साई ओम नमस्ते वेलकम टू कैवल्य योगा गुरुकुलम के वाई जी एस बी ऑल नो इट थैंक यू फॉर टेकिंग टाइम एंड ज्वाइनिंग दिस स्मॉल ऑफरिंग ऑन दिस ऑस्पिशियस ओकेजन ऑफ गुरु पौर्णिमा पूर्णिमा इज फुल मून एंड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर फुल मून वी ऑफर आर माइंड अनकंडीशनली टू द टीचिंग्स ऑफ द गुरु एंड देफ आई वॉन्ट मेक दिस ऑफरिंग टू माई बिलवड गुरु भगवान श्री सत्य साई बाबा His teachings have inspired me, continue to inspire me. He holds my hand every moment of every day, and guides me in every single matter of my life. And today, in this beautiful park, I'm being inspired to take a walk along a path to give you an idea as to how He leads us through this path, the spiritual path, through this journey of life as we will. the last 3 or 4 days i was contemplating on what can i offer to my beloved guru and i kept asking swami as i dearly and dearingly call him in my heart i said swami what can i offer you on guru purnima how can i make myself worthy this time because these are spiritual moments in the hindu calendar that are given for deep introspection it's not in necessarily confined to an event of celebration which is popularly done for most of the people there's a big event organized how many people come what are the singers what are the speakers and what food we have and all of that is become a kind of a social accepted tradition i kind of have a different view on these um these these spiritual moments in cosmos which the ancient rishis identified as moments ideal moments suitable for deep introspection and connection with the divine and therefore let us take this moment of guru purnima this this beautiful auspicious day this night and invoke the guru within us sai is not gone anywhere sai is the guru now awakening in your intuition allow this guru to speak to you allow him to be the king of your intuition allow him to guide your thoughts allow him allow him to channelize your feelings let him take over unconditionally not just this night but beginning from this night let him be part of your and my lifestyle this is something i very strongly believe and the more i allow him to direct my life to direct my thoughts to direct my words every single moment i allow him to do that i don't sit back and ask him i just allow him knowing that he is holding my hand he is walking with me in this path in this journey of life then the beauty is he becomes more and more and more real and then life becomes so enriched and so empowered so uh, so the last few days as i was contemplating and asking swami what is it that i can offer you very beautifully as i said he was he is the king of my intuition so he intuitively allowed me to receive a very beautiful chant it came in the form of feelings and then it transformed itself into words in english and then i eventually translated them into sanskrit this chant to me signifies how he continues to lead my path our path in every day of our lives so let me walk down this path and share this little chant with you all if you like it please use it share it i never claim any copyright or any, you don't need my permission to share anything because i don't own any of this this is coming from the divine it belongs to everyone who listens to it who hears it so if you like it if it touches your heart if there is something within you that that um tunes into this by all means take it 
this is uh, our offering to the Guru and this is Guru's blessing to us. It is always an interaction of give and take. Om Sai Shri Sai Jaya Sai Om Om Sai As I walk down this, this path, this journey that is symbolic of life, as I invoke this divine beloved Guru and I say, Swami, what is that one message that you gave us all, that one message that I can take to the grave with me, that one message that can um, sustain me through many, many, many lifetimes. What is the essence of all your teachings? And then it became very clear to me that his entire teachings, his entire life, all that he did, by way of either establishing institutions or creating organizations or whatever it is that he did, encompassing all of that, can all come into the human values that he gifted us. Through all these paths, through the path of Satya, one of the human values, truth, through the path of Dharma, right action, through the path of Shanti, peace, through the path of love, prema, through the path of ahimsa, non-violence. Through these paths, he continues to lead our lives. He continues to hold our hands. He continues to shower his love, his teachings, his grace, his mercy, so that we can enrich ourselves and reach the highest goal of liberation itself. And as I contemplated on these human values, Swami intuitively, of course, gave me these very beautiful words that began to form in my heart. And therefore, with a lot of feeling, with a lot of bhakti, I'm offering this at His lotus feet on this auspicious day. The first one is Satya, Truth. Satyena yaha swatantram dadati Satyena yaha he who gave me the truth and set me free. He gave me freedom through truth. Swatantram is freedom. Dadati, the one who bestows. Yaha, he who gave me the truth and set me free. Satyena yaha swatantram dadati. So what kind of truth did he give me and set me free? Aham brahmasmi etat pradati. He imparts the truth that I am Brahman. I am God. I am God. I am not different from God. This is the highest truth represented by the Vedas, by Vedanta. The essence of Hinduism, if you will, or Sanatana Dharma, as it is originally named and called. The essence is you are divine. I am divine. We are all part of that one divinity. There is never two, there is only one divinity that has expressed itself and is perceived as the many. Aham Brahmasmi Yetat Pradati Kaivalya Margena Nayati Mama Guruhu This path of oneness, this path of liberation, Kaivalya, the state. You lead me in this path. This entire chant comes to me in present tense. In, it's not asking, please lead me, uh, please give me. There is no asking here, there is no begging here. It is an acceptance of the Guru, you are doing this to me. And therefore I offer my salutations to you. Kaivalya Margena Nayati Mama Guruhu My Guru leads me in this path of Kaivalya. To that Guru, the embodiment of truth, I offer my salutations. Vande Gurum Satya Murtim Namami Satya Naya Swatantram Dadati Aham Brahmasmi Etat Pradati Satya Naya Swatantram Dadati Aham Brahmasmi Etat Pradati Kaivalya Margena Nayati Mama Guru Kaivalya Margena Nayati Mama Guru Vande Gurum 
ಸತ್ಯಮೂರ್ತಿ ನಮಿ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಸತ್ಯಮೂರ್ತಿ ನಮಿ ಓಂ ಸಾಯಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಜಯ ಸಾಯಿ ಓಂ ಓಂ ಸಾಯಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಜಯ ಸಾಯಿ ಓಂ ಸಾಯಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಜಯ ಸಾಯಿ ದೆನ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಧರ್ಮ ರೈಟ್ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ ದ ಐಡಿಯಾ ಆಫ್ ರೈಟ್ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ನೀಡ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ಫ್ರಾಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಷನ್ what is right for me may not be right for you what is right for a woman right action for a woman not necessarily right action for the man the right action for a child may not be the right action for an adult the right action for someone raised and born in the west may not be the right action for somebody in the east right action is contextual dharma is contextual it changes acro- uh, along with time it changes according to culture it changes according to gender it changes according to your upbringing and my upbringing so it is a very contextual dharma yet there are certain parts of this right action that good morning there are certain parts of this right action that are universal samanya dharma what is that for example be nice to people don't hurt anyone uh, there is a, a social code and ethics that we all follow how we dress how we eat how we speak and so on right so that is something common uh, across uh, humanity if you will as of today however a larger part of this dharma that swami talks about is swadharma my dharma what is right for me what is my calling in life why am i born what am i going to contribute to my family to my nation to my community to myself what is it that i want to do in my life is the question each one of us have to ask when this call becomes clearer and when we begin to follow that call then that is the true dharma that we begin to follow and that is the beauty of this powerful teaching of bhagwan baba dharma is a second human value he gives us and so these beautiful words formed in the depths of my heart swadharma margam avamuktavan mam he freed me by allowing me to follow my dharma you know 2011 when bhagwan baba passed away and he took samadhi I had this powerful clear vision but this is the call which I always kept hearing I never had the strength the courage um or the clarity to follow that call but then I knew this is what I am meant to do this is what I want to do this is what gives me the highest joy and the highest peace sharing spiritual wisdom that has blessed me and continues to bless me sharing the path of yoga sharing the path of vedanta sharing and reviving sanatana dharma in a language that we can all relate this was my call i took that and to this day 12 years later i don't regret it even one second does it give me joy it gives me eternal joy to be in this path of service without any expectations swadharma margam avamuktavan ma he you free me by helping me follow my call nishkama jeevanam shikshayati maam you teach me the life of selflessness kama is desire craving Shel- selfishness if you will nishkama is selfless desireless with no agendas of your own no expectations a life that just is out to serve to help others because why because we are all part of one consciousness and therefore that call to service comes naturally nishkama jeevanam shiksha yati maam kalyana margena nayati mama guru hu kalyana margena this path is a kalyana marga is a path of celebration because 
that's where you're coming. You follow your inner call. You celebrate who you are. Bhagavan Baba followed his inner call at the age of 13. He decided to serve the world. And he, he did. He celebrated who he was. You and I need to celebrate ourselves for who we are. When we answer our call, we become, we become com content in doing what we do. Kalyana Margena Nayati Mama Guru, you lead me in this path of celebration, a celebratory life, if you will. Vande Guru, Dharma Murtim Namami. I salute you, my dear Guru. You who are the embodiment of Dharma. Swadharma Margam Ava Muktavan Mam Nishkama Jeevanam Shikshayati Mam Swadharma Margam Ava Muktavan Mam Nishkama Jeevanam Shikshayati Mam Kalyana Margena Nayati Mama Guru Kalyana Margena Nayati Mama Guru Vande Guru Dharma Murtim Namami Vande Guru Dharma Murtim Namami Om Sai Shri Sai Jaya Sai Om Om Sai Shri Sai Jaya Sai Om The third human value is Shanti, peace. Peace is also a synonym for equanimity. If there is equanimity, there is peace. If there is peace, there is equanimity. When there is internal peace in every individual, there has to be peace in the society, in the community, and in the world. So if we are quick to point a finger out in the world and say there is no peace out there, remember, that is a reflection of the lack of peace within. So let us start with you and me. Let's find that peace within and let it find reflection in the world around us. Shanti. In this, Bhagwan Baba introduced a word, it was so unique to me. And I did some research and I came across his very discourse that has talked about this. And I will share that link with you in, in, the, in the comments section, uh, because this is going to be published in YouTube. So there is a comment section and I share that as well there. The word that came to me was anapeksha. Anapeksha. Apeksha means expectation. Anapeksha. Anapeksha means no expectations. A path of no expectations gives you peace, right? Now, is it practical not to have expectations? Anapeksha. Anapeksha is, to me, it's actually quite simple. Don't ex set out so many expectations. For example, just as I'm doing this video, if I have an expectation that 20,000 people are going to see this or 100,000 people are going to see this, and, and maybe barely 500 people will see it. Now, when I do that, if I set up an expectation, guess what? I'm setting up myself for disappointments because those expectations may or may not be met. Why have any expectations? Why not focus on the job at hand and do a good job and let that be a complete satisfaction and complete in itself? It gives me joy because I'm sharing what is really precious in my heart and therefore I'm completely satisfied. I have no further expectations out of who will see this, what they will say and so on. So anapeksha gives me peace, sets my heart at peace. So it is possible to work hard, to do your best without any expectations. So in the Gita, in the 12th chapter, and I think it is a 16th or 17th verse, at this point I'm not able to recollect, the verse goes like this. Anapeksha sutir dakshaha udasino gatavyataha sarvaramba parityagi yomad bhaktaha samepriyaha. Krishna says, this one devotee is dear to me. Who is that devotee? The devotee who has the six qualities. Anapekshaha, suchihi, daksha, udasina, gatavyataha. 
sarvarambh parityaga so there are six qualities here anapeksha is no expectations as we just talked of, talked about the next one is suchihi suchihi anapeksha suchi daksha so suchihi suchi is cleanliness so baba talks and teaches us about cleanliness of the word that is spoken so basically don't hurt anyone try to be as truthful as sweet as obliging as you can speak obligingly even if you cannot oblige others that's what baba would teach us cleanliness of the mind be free from judgments we are so quick to judge someone as good or bad we ascribe motives to people refrain from that be clean know that everyone is playing a role as per divine orchestration just accept people as they are accept situations as they are without the necessity to judge good or bad or uh, up or down black or white or rich or poor anything so cleanliness of the mind and i'm keeping the short otherwise the video can go very long cleanliness of the spirit the spirit is already clean right of course it is untouched by fire and and wind but then what does that mean it means our perception of our inner being should be limitless i am brahman i am limitless fear cannot touch me greed cannot enter me this is the kind of beautiful thoughts that should be why because i am limitless there are no fetters that bind who i am so when that kind of emotions are nurtured then the spirit becomes pure at least in our perception of ourselves and therefore suchi hi swami teaches us about cleanliness of the body cleanliness of the spoken word and cleanliness of the spirit and then comes daksha anapeksha suchir daksha daksha is determination daksha is knowing that you're capable of the task at hand i always like this quote which i read uh, um, many 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 decades ago uh, i can afford to say many 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 decades because i'm past 60 so the beautiful quote says you are never given a desire without being given the power to make it come true if there is a desire in your heart know that you also have the power to fulfill that desire if there is a task that has come your way know that it has come your way because it is going to challenge your inner potential to make it happen and therefore cause you to grow more anapeksha suchir daksha udasino gatavyata udasina udasina means unattached do not be too attached to the outcome of whatever it is you are doing whatever the task is whether you are cooking a meal do not be attached to the outcome focus on the task at hand don't worry about the outcome because worrying about the outcome of any task will often compromise on the quality of the task at hand gatavyataha gatavyataha is free from anxieties free from worries i'm taking this directly from that discourse of swami as it came to me it's a very beautiful um, collection of all his discourses that explains these six qualities gatavyata has free from anxieties free from worries why do you worry why are you anxious because you and i often find ourselves caught in the past that fills our mind with unnecessary luggage of things that happened to us what did they say to me what this happened to me and this and that and we are worried about what might happen in the future we are often caught between the past and the future often times ask yourself and catch yourself when you are alone what are your thoughts either of the past or of the future what about the present moment how much of your effort how much of your attention is given to the present moment and if you do that you have no time for the past or the future and therefore you become free from worries अनपेक्ष शुचिर्दक्ष उदासीनो गर्वारंभ परी सर्वारंभ परी दन हू रिनाउंस फाइनली कम्स फाइनली देर इज रिनाउंसिएशन 
renunciation of what? Of your family? Renunciation of your job? No, no, none of that. Renunciation of the ego. Renunciation of the ego that you are the doer. You might say, if I am not the doer, then what is my interest in doing? But that's the whole beauty of spirituality. When you are not the doer, you become even more interested. An actor plays a role because he does not identify himself with the role. He knows it's a role he is playing. Right? And that role could be a role of a beggar. The actor knows I am a millionaire. I get paid by Hollywood or Bollywood really well. I just have to do my role. He does not identify. So there is no ego in that acting because he knows who he truly is. If you and I know that our true nature is eternal, there is really no death, no birth, no loss, no gain. We are this creation. This creation is an extension of me and you. And therefore there is, as you see this abundance around me, look at this abundance around me. All of this abundance is what? Is an extension of your consciousness, of my consciousness. And once I establish myself there, then there is no little ego, there is no sundar, there's no space for sundar to exist in that vast consciousness, right? And therefore, in that concept we have to understand, that context we have to understand. And therefore, Krishna says, he who has all these six qualities is the one dear to me. And therefore, I know I took time to explain that because there is just one word of that third paragraph, the Shanti chant. It came, anapekshadi, anapekshadi, I use the word adi, simply to say Anapeksha and the others. Hello? Anapeksha and the others. So now we know what the others mean. Anapeksha di maam riddhim dadati. Anapeksha di maam riddhim dadati. You enrich me, you empower me with these six qualities. Anapeksha, sushir, darkshaha, udasino, gatavyataha, sarvaramma parityagaha. All of these six qualities, you enrich me. You, rhythm is growth. Rhythm, riddhi is expansion. Riddhi, siddhi, right? The two wives of Ganesha. Uh, siddhi is manifestation. Riddhi is expansion, growth. Um, we always think riddhi is about wealth. All right. So what are the wealth that he's giving me? He's giving me the wealth of these six qualities that enriches me. So therefore, he enriches me with these six qualities. Anapek shadimam riddhim dadati. Samatvam yoga meti pradati. He teaches me the real yoga, the yoga of equanimity. Samatvam, the highest form. See, the essence of Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita represents yoga in its truest sense. And the essence of that representation is just this phrase, Samatvam yoga muchate. Samatvam yoga uchate. That's it. So that Samatvam yoga meti pradati. You impart that wisdom. That equanimity is real yoga. Prashanti margena nayati mama guruhu. You lead me in this path of eternal peace. Nayati means leader. Nayati means leading. You're nayaka, leader. So nayati, you lead me in this path of eternal peace or to eternal peace. Prashanti margena nayati mama guruhu. Vande gurum shantamurtim namami. To you, O oh Guru, who was the embodiment of peace, I offer my salutations. Prashanti Marge Nanayati Mama Guru Prashanti Marge Nanayati Mama Guru Vande Gurum Shantamurtim Namami Vande Gurum Shantamurtim Namami Om Sai Shri Sai Jaya Sai Om Om Sai Shri Sai Jaya Sai Om Om Sai Shri Sai Jaya Sai Om The fourth 
value, the fourth treasure, the fourth jewel that Swami gifted us or gifts us is love, prema. Love we normally understand as emotion, but love has many gradients. It begins with, with uh, raga, if you will, with craving. I need this, I need that, I'm attached to this, I'm attached to that. Um, that is how it begins. There is one that's a smallest form, uh, it's still part of love, but it's a small form of love. And then you have anuraga. From raga, you get to anuraga. Anuraga is you love your family, you're attached to your children, you're attached to your parents, you're attached to your siblings, you're attached to your friends. So that is anuraga, a sense of greater attachment. From that, it goes to attachment to God, bhakti. And then goes to sharanagati, surrender. The highest form of love is sharan, surrender. Unconditional acceptance is sharanagati. So therefore love has many forms leading us in the spiritual path. So this beautiful words, these beautiful words came to me and let me share that with you. It goes niswartha premena priyatavan maam. Because when I think of this one particular word prema, Bhagavan Baba is undoubtedly the very embodiment of love. He is very selfless. What kind of love? Niswartha prema. Niswartha prema. Swartha means selfishness. Niswartha means there is no selfishness in his love. He took up this mission for the benefit of humanity, mankind, when he was 13 or 14. He continued that till the last day of his life. And therefore, all of that was fueled by selfless love, Niswartha Prema. And a little bit of that sprinkled on me and therefore I say, you cherished me, you nourished me. Priyatavan Maam is, you cherished me, you nourished me with this selfless love. Niswartha Premena Priyatavan Maam. Bhaktena Hridayam Pavitravan Maam. You purified my heart. Pavitra is pure. You purified my heart. Or you purify my heart. It's present tense. You lead me. You nourish me with selfless love. And you purify my heart. So when you say bhaktena, with what? With bhakti, devotion. Love matures into devotion when we direct that beautiful, powerful energy towards God. Sharanagati margena nayati mama guruhu. This marga, this path of devotion leads me to sharanagati, unconditional surrender, unconditional acceptance. Acceptance in spite of all your efforts. I will continue doing the effort, but I, do, I have completely surrendered the outcome and everything that is associated with this effort, even the doership, I surrender it. So Sharanagati Margain and Nayati Mama Guru, you lead me in this path of unconditional surrender. Vande Gurum Prema Murtim Namami. I offer my salutations to the embodiment of love. To you, O Guru, who teaches me this path, I offer my salutation to the embodiment of Niswartha premena priyatavan maam Bhakte na hridayam pavitravan maam Niswartha premena priyatavan maam Bhakte na hridayam pavitravan maam Sharanagati margena nayati mama guru Sharanagati margena nayati mama guru Vande gurum prema murtim namami Vande gurum prema murtim namami Om Sai Shri Sai Jaya Sai Om Om Sai Shri Sai Jaya Sai And the fifth value that he continues to gift us is the value of Ahimsa. Satya, Dharma, Shanti, Prema and Ahimsa. Ahimsa, non-violence. Non-violence comes when I learn to practice the qualities of perseverance, of self-confidence, 
when I don't feel I'm a victim of circumstance and somebody is harming me, when I don't feel that, I don't need to get back and protect myself or defend myself or justify why I need to act the way I, that we do these days, right? And therefore, these beautiful words were again gifted by Swami. Shraddhatma Vishwasa Shikshayati Maam Shraddha Atma Vishwasa Shikshayati You teach me this quality of Shraddha, persevere with faith. Stay in your path with faith. Have faith. Atma Vishwasa, self-confidence. Have the confidence that nothing can shake who you are. Nothing can deter you from your path. Nothing can harm you because you are eternal. Have that confidence in your heart. He teaches me that. Shraddhatma Vishwasa Shiksha Yati Maam Kshama Daya Shaktim Pradarsha Yati Maam Kshama and Daya are qualities we think are weaknesses in today's world, unfortunately. Kshama starts with a K. Kshama is forgiveness. The quality of forgiveness that we learn so powerfully from the life of Jesus Christ, the teachings of Jesus Christ, is based on forgiveness, right? So forgiveness is something we first forgive ourselves, we forgive others. Why? Because our nature is to love. Kshama, daya, compassion, kindness. Be kind to everyone. Be kind to nature. And then what happens is when I give the universe respect, and show kindness to the universe in all its aspects, including human beings, including animals, being kind to animals, being compassionate animals, right? In whatever form I want to participate in expressing that compassion, go ahead, follow your heart. When I do that, then the universe begins to respect me. That is the law of the universe. When you show respect, when you show kindness, you live in that aura of kindness never out of it. Kshama, Daya, Shaktim, that is the power that he is giving. He demonstrated that power of forgiveness, of compassion. Mangalya Margena Nayati Mamaguru. This path is a path of auspiciousness. So you lead me in this beautiful auspicious path of forgiveness, of confidence, of love, of non-violence. To you, O Guru, the embodiment of non-violence, I offer my salutations. Vande Gurum Ahimsamurtim Namami Vande Gurum Ahimsamurtim Namami Shraddhatma Vishwasa Shikshayati Maam Kshamadaya Shaktim Pradarshayati Maam Shraddhatma Vishwasa Shikshayati Maam Kshamadaya Shaktim Pradarshayati Maam Mangalya Margena Nayati Mama Guru Mangalya Margena Nayati Mama Guru Vande Gurum Ahim Samurtim Namami Vande Gurum Ahim Samurtim Namami Om Sai Shri Sai Jaya Sai Om 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 Truth, right action, peace, love, non-violence. My dear brothers and sisters, we have had and we continue to have the greatest and the most powerful teacher that ever walked the earth, Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba. Om Sai Shri Sai Jaya Sai Om Om Sai Shri Sai Jaya Sai Om 
ओम साई श्री साई जय साई ओम ओम साई श्री साई जय साई ओ